everybody and uh, welcome to Parsic Trinity. My name is Imogen and I'm welcoming you this morning as our minister Tim is on his holidays for a couple of weeks. Um, I just want to run through a few notices for our church family. So next week, excitingly, is our holiday club. It's finally come around. Um, we have just got one or two spaces available, so if you're hoping that your wee one is going to go, please sign them up uh, as soon as you can with just one or two places available now. Um, and if you are volunteering at the Holiday Club, there is a meeting for you on Wednesday evening. If you can go along to that just to get your final instructions, that would be, that'd be brilliant. Following on from the Holiday Club, um, next week our youth worker Alan Scott will be leading our service. Uh, it will be a slightly different format than normal involving our, our young people, uh, which means we won't be live streaming the service next week. So if there's anyone you know who was hoping to watch the service next week, we're not going to be able to live stream next week, but do please come and just join us in person if you're at all able to. Um, our friends uh, at Wellington are having a, a concert of gospel music on the 14th of August with funds going to the Lodging House Mission and there's an email address up there if you are interested, if you need any more information or you want to reserve yourself uh, a seat. Um, and for those of you who get the newsletter, you'll have seen some kind of advance notice that we are hopefully having um, small groups restarting at the end of August. Um, the focus of the small groups is going to be an eight week course on mental health and um, with faith at the heart of that. So um, just bear that in mind for your diaries in, in the coming, coming months. Um, at the moment, we'd be really interested to hear from you if you would be able to host a small group Whatever time suits you, if it's a daytime that suits you, or if it's an evening that suits you, just if you'd be able to open your house and you have a kettle, you can make tea and coffee, that's all we kind of need. If you think that's something that you could do, um, if you email Tim, he would be uh, delighted to, to hear from you. And we're delighted that um, Roger Sturrock um, has come to lead us in worship this morning. Um, and I'm going to hand over to Roger now. Thanks, Roger. Thank you very much, uh, Imogen. Um, I'm normally based at Wellington Church, but um, I go to Kelvin Side Hill Head from time to time. And as you know, we're in this process of clustering um, of churches of Scotland in different parts of Glasgow Presbytery and uh, the cluster at the West End uh, consists of Partick Trinity, Wellington, Kelvin Side Hillhead and Kelvin Bridge. So uh, it's great that we can share uh, in services together. Um, so if you're able to, uh, please stand for our opening responses. The world belongs to God, yes, and all its people. It is good to live in community, to work and talk with each other. Love and faith come together. Justice and peace join hands. If the friends of Jesus keep silent, these souls we shout aloud. We are glad to be in God's house. To listen and sing and pray. And so as we uh, gather together, we'll begin uh, by praising God uh, with as the deer pants for the water.
please be seated. And now George is going to lead us in prayer. Thank you, George. Our prayer today is an intercessory prayer. We're going to come to God and pray for other people. So let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God and loving Heavenly Father, it is our privilege to bring our prayers about other people before you. We are praying for people near to us and those far away. We start by praying for those suffering from addictions. First Lord, we are deeply concerned for people suffering from alcohol abuse. Just a few days ago, statistics revealed Alcohol-related deaths in Scotland had risen to the highest level in 13 years. Secondly, Lord, we plead for people in the grip of drugs abuse. Just over a week ago, Scotland's drug deaths rate was revealed as the second highest ever recorded. We are ashamed in Scotland that our problem is worse than any other European nation. We ask you to rescue those enslaved by these addictions and so many other addictions and ask you to help their families struggling as a result. Lord God, we are concerned for spouses facing abuse because of it. Young people and children going without food a clean home, without care, facing physical and mental trauma, and without a simple family love, because a mother or a father, perhaps both, spend most of their family money on their addictions. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done and are doing. We thank you for inspiring people who tend those who are in such circumstances support and comfort the doctors, nurses, social workers, ministers and priests and others involved. We thank you, Lord, that you are a God whose heart and actions go out to all those in distress. <clears throat> Government efforts to solve these addiction crises just aren't working. Dear God, raise up people with ideas and action to make a difference, to save lives and end this human mess and misery. And let the addicted learn about Jesus. Let them hear his words in John 10:10. 10, 10. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Looking beyond our shores, we turn our thoughts and prayers to people in danger spots around the world. Putin's unjust and outrageous war against Ukraine, causing many thousands of deaths. Chinese threats and aggression towards the democracy in Taiwan. The looming humanitarian catastrophe in Afghanistan, brutal military repression in Myanmar with mass civil unrest and fighting, <coughs> nuclear threats from the dictatorships of Iran and North Korea, Islamist militants causing horrors in Africa, Ethiopia we are fighting between the army and forces of the north, led to atrocities on all sides and the death of 500,000 people due to the violence and famine. Yemen, where six years of brutal conflict have ravaged the country, millions of families are struggling to survive. The violent crisis between Israel and Palestine, with the peace process long dead and little hope of a two-state solution. 
Haiti in the Caribbean where violent gangs are roaming the capital Port-au-Prince and hundreds have died in recent weeks and Sri Lanka where there is so much civil unrest over the island nation's serious economic crisis. And today we hear of unrest in Bosnia, in the Balkans, which some have said is caused by Russia st stirring up trouble there. And let us pray also for the worldwide church and Christians in these and numerous other parts of the globe who face daily persecution and possible murder for their faith. Help and protect them, dear Lord. Let the hate that surrounds them be replaced with love. Our minds race just thinking about these, the turmoil in these parts of the world. Lord God, all things are possible through you, so we implore you to bring peace and stability to all troubled states. We ask you to give wisdom, courage and perseverance to the United Nations and other peacemakers throughout the world. And at home, help us also to be peacemakers where we discover, when we discover any broken relationships, however minor, among family, friends and acquaintances. Let us be the peacemakers. We confess our own feelings <clears throat> and lack of love. We thank you, Lord, that you forgive us when we sincerely confess our sins. And we ask you to give each of us that deep spirit of forgiveness in our own lives. A spirit that bears no grudges and forgives others as you forgive us. We pray for our own local church community in the West End. We pray for our, our church and the other local congregations involved in our cluster of four churches. Wellington, Kelvin Sidehill Head, Kelvin Bridge and our own party Trinity. Representatives from each of these congregations are meeting to seek your way forward in this part of Glasgow Presbytery. May all involved in our cluster discussions have open minds and pray continually for your guidance that your will be done along the Byers Road and Great Western Road corridors. Lord, help us all to pray for this work and bless churches in all parts of Glasgow and throughout Scotland confronting these difficult Church of Scotland adjustments where many church buildings will have to close. Could ours be one of them? How would we react if that was suggested? So, so many people and countries with problems abroad in our own country, in our own country and here in Partick. We place them all before you, conscious that we must do whatever we can to solve them. And now in a short time of silence, we bring before you people that we know whom we pray to you about now. We thank you for all that you are at work among that you are at work among our congregation and our other congregations. Lord, we know that each one of us should pray for all these issues. Please forgive us when we forget to do so. 
remind us of the words of 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And help us never to despair over what appear to be unsolvable issues. Remind us of the words of Philippians 4. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. We ask all this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much, George, uh, for leading us in prayer. And uh, as we come together as a family of God's people, uh, we will say together the Lord's Prayer, which uh, is before our next uh, hymn. So shall we just remain seated uh, and say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And so we come to uh, another um, hymn of praise. The emphasis for this morning is on the Psalms. We've already sung a psalm, Psalm 42, as the deer pants for the water. And we're now going to sing another psalm, God is our strength and refuge, to the tune of the Dambusters March, um, which you will recognize. Not so long ago, I did this in another church, and the choir were up in the balcony, and they were very tempted to make paper planes <laughs> and shoot them down as we were singing uh, this particular song. But it's a wonderful tune. And it goes very well with this um, psalm that we're going to sing together. So shall we stand to sing? And maybe the praise group would just play the tune for us so that everybody knows how it goes.
Please be seated and we will now uh, listen uh, to God's word. Thank you. Our first reading is Psalm number 42. Psalm 42. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one, with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. My soul is downcast within me. Therefore I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mazar. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day, the Lord directs his love. At night, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, sing to me all day long, where is your God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. Our second reading is from Psalm, num eh, no it's not, we've just read our psalm. Our second reading is from Colossians chapter 3, starting at verse 12. Colossians 3, 12 to 17. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, Elspeth. Um, may what I say and what you hear be acceptable to our Lord Jesus Christ. Now up on the screen are some of the current popular songs. It's coming home, it's coming, it's coming, football's coming home, and Sweet Caroline. Uh, good times never seem so good, sweet Caroline. I believe they never would. Could sweet Caroline, good times never seem so good. Now, what are these songs relating to? Anybody tell me? Football, in particular, what relating to football? 
the lionesses, that's right. And when they won the European Cup playing Germany, um, spontaneously people were singing in the crowd and around the country, it's coming home, it's coming, football's coming home. And then following that, there were renditions of Sweet Caroline, and if we got you to do it this morning, you'd be on your feet and you would be doing this as we sang Sweet Caroline. So people were spontaneously, joyfully singing these songs after that great occasion. And often people will say, well, you know, singing has gone out of fashion, singing together in unity is a thing of the past, but you go to any football match uh, or any sporting occasion, you will see and hear lots and lots of singing. And men in particular will say, well, I can't sing, singing's not my thing. You take them to a football match and before you know it, they're on their feet singing their particular favorite song. So it's not true um, that men don't sing and it's up to women. Singing is very much part of our being, uh, of human beings. Uh, singing is a natural expression of who we are and what we do. I want to move on to the next slide. Now, we've just um, heard Psalm 42 being sung, and if you read through the Psalms, the key message about the Psalms is getting real with God. Getting real with God. Often in churches, um, when we come to prayer, we address God in a particular way. Certainly ministers have been taught a particular format to use uh, when they're involved in public congregational prayer. And that's very good, and it's helpful to have a structure in prayer. But when you read through the Psalms, the psalmists don't use that kind of structure. Uh, they are very personal and upfront uh, with God. And if we move on to the next slide, um, I wonder how many of you read the psalms on a regular basis. Because as you can see from this structure here, there are 150 Hebrew uh, songs, uh, and they're divided into five books, as hymns, as we've been singing today, laments, where the psalmist is crying out bitterly because of the circumstances in which he finds himself. Thanksgiving, psalms of thanksgiving, royal psalms for great occasions, uh, when the king is going up to the temple uh, of God, then royal psalms would be sing as part, sung as part of a procession. And then wisdom psalms, psalms that reflect on the wonders of creation and of how God acts in the universe. You have everything in the Psalms. In fact, Martin Luther, the great reformer, said about the book of Psalms that it was God's little Bible. God's little Bible. And therefore, it's important for you and I to read the Psalms, uh, to use them as part of our daily uh, worship uh, to God. Because every human emotion is found uh, within the Psalms. If you think you're unique in how you're feeling or the situation in which you're in is particular to you, it is not so. When you read through the Psalms, you'll find 
that there will be a psalm just for you. My mother was a bit of a fretter. Um, she would fret about this and that, uh, and I guess there are some fretters in this room uh, worried about this or that detail or what might happen, fretting upon this. Well, there's a psalm for you, Psalm 37. And how does it begin? Don't fret. And then you read through it and you find uh, God's answer uh, to those who fret. But the particular psalm that we've been thinking about this morning and singing about is Psalm 42. And uh, we can move on to that. Psalm 42, and the psalmist begins with a picture as a deer pants for the water. Sometimes we have in our heads a picture of a deer wandering through lovely glades and arriving at a pool. That is not the picture of the psalmist. It is of a deer panting pretty near death um, in a wilderness seeking water and we've all seen pictures of this uh, as we've seen the problems of um, uh, of thirst and of dryness in the deserts of Africa and so on and the psalmist begins this psalm because he's going through a particular experience God doesn't seem to be there anymore. As a deer pants for the water which it can't find, so my soul thirsts after you. God doesn't seem to be there. And I guess that can be an experience for many of us from time to time uh, that as we go through um, our Christian experience or our church life, or maybe we've got no church connection particularly whatsoever, maybe we feel God just is not there. And that was the experience of the psalmist in Psalm 42. Where is God? Why am I in this situation? What can I do about it? And he is upfront and personal with God, not addressing God in any kind of flowery language, but saying it as it really is. Many years ago in another church in this vicinity, um, we asked uh, a gentleman uh, to take the intercessory prayers, just like George has done this morning. This gentleman had never done it before. He had no great education. Uh, he'd left school and worked as a miner. Um, and um, uh, we weren't sure how it was going to go. And he came up to the front and he said, I don't really know what to say, God. I really don't know what to say. But this is how I feel about things. And by the time he'd finished his prayer, there wasn't a dry eye in the congregation. Because he was speaking and praying from the heart, it meant something to him, and he clicked with every member of the congregation. And this is the psalmist saying, you're not there, God. Why are you not there? What can I do about it? And then he comes up with the first antidote, if you like. And we move on to the next slide, which shows the fact that he looks back in his experience and he remembers the encouragement that he had from worshipping together. He remembers the joy of worshipping God in a company of people. And that gives him the encouragement that although God doesn't seem to be there at the moment, he's been with him in the past. 
The psalmist says, when I look back and remember the joy of going up with the congregation to worship God, I know and knew uh, that he was there. He remembers that experience and in the letter to the Colossians which Elspeth wrote, read out to us, we are encouraged uh, to boost each other by singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to each other to encourage one another. That's why we come to church, to encourage one another to be together because when we do that, God speaks to us in a very special way. So the psalmist reflects on the fact, well, if God is not with me now, he's certainly been with me in the past. And I can cling on to that as something that will help me to get through this difficult period. And then if we move on to the next slide, there is another experience. When we cry out to God, is God listening? We see that in verse Seven is God listening and the psalmist says all your waves and billows go over me. If you've ever submerged yourself in water you can actually hear what other people say if they're in the water with you but you can't hear what people are saying from above and that's the experience of the psalmist that all the waves and billows have flowed over him and he feels totally cut off from God. And he's praying, um, well, are you there, God? Are you listening? And often um, we are in an experience like that, aren't we? We are going through a difficult period, we're praying, and just God doesn't seem to be there. God doesn't seem to answer. And yet, we know that God is always present and he always is there. But often, we address God with a megaphone, don't we? We think, well, the louder we shout, the more likely he is to hear us and to answer us. And you remember in the Old Testament when there was the competition between the prophet Elijah and the uh, false prophets of the then um, idol called Baal, how um, the false prophets, the priests of Baal, were shouting and shouting to Baal that he would pour fire on the sacrifice which had been prepared. They cut themselves with knives and they shouted and shouted all day. Nothing happened. And then Elijah just said a little quiet prayer and the fire came down on the sacrifice. We don't need to shout to God, but we do need to speak to him and we need to be real when we are coming before God. God doesn't mind if you complain about him. He doesn't mind if you say it's not fair that I'm in this situation. Because if you read through the Psalms, you'll find that many, many times the Psalmists do that. It's not fair, God. I shouldn't be here. You shouldn't have put me in this situation. And what are you going to do about it? That's often a sentiment in the Psalms. And yet, how often are we honest enough uh, to pray like that? And the next slide will show us um, uh, it's important to be totally honest with God. When you're honest with God about your emotions, it's actually an act of worship. When you're honest with God, uh, with your emotions, it's actually an act of worship. <coughs> God is listening and he is keen uh, to know and hear an honest prayer. An honest prayer, not a holy willy prayer, as Burns had it, but an honest prayer 
from the heart. And as the psalmist goes through Psalm 42, he begins to get his perspectives right. And the next slide will show that for us. This is the message translation. Experience leads to hope and trust in God. Why are you down in the dumps, dear soul? Why are you crying the blues? Fix my eyes on God, and soon I'll be praising again. He puts a smile on my face. He's my God. And what the psalmist is doing here is getting things into perspective. So often we can be enclosed in our own little bubble. We think that we are the centre of the universe, that all our problems are unique to us. But the psalmist suddenly realises, as he reflects and engages honestly with God, that he needs to get the right perspective, that he re needs to realise that he's not the only one and will not be the only one in the situation he finds himself. We need to get our perspectives right. We need to get the big picture of how God is operating in the world in which we live. And so it's important to read the Psalms. And it would be good if each one of us, and I'm speaking to myself as well, were to read a Psalm every day. Because as we do that, we'll be led through the experiences which will resonate with us as we read through the Psalms and will enable us to get a real perspective on God and how he deals with you and me and how he operates within the world. Amen. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the experiences of the psalmists. We thank you that we can come before you honestly. And we ask that you would strip away from each one of us the pretense that we often have and help us to get real with you, to be honest with you. And so, Lord, we ask that by your Holy Spirit, you will enable us to encourage not just ourselves, but to encourage one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, so that whatever we do, we may do it for your honour and glory. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we're going to sing our next Him, O oh My Soul, and um, then I think the young people will come and join us. So, uh, O oh My Soul.
be seated. Well, I can see some masks that have appeared. Um, is that, that's a lion. Yeah, a loud lion too. He's not called Aslan, is he by any means? No, he's not called Aslan, no. Have we got any more lions? We've got another one here, is that a lion too? Oh yeah, gosh, wow. Um, so you've been uh, thinking about lions and there's another one at the back there too. Um, and um, we've been thinking this morning about how we talk to God, how we talk to God. Um, would anybody like to tell me how we talk to God? Anybody? Yes. Um, Any anyway, other ways in which we can... When we're scared, it, it, we can talk to lions, can make you scared. That's right. But when we talk to God, how do we talk to God? Anybody know how we talk to God? Over there, yes? We pray, don't we? We pray, that's one of the ways in which we talk to God. We were thinking about, uh, in the Bible, there's a big section called the Psalms, how the Psalm, the writers of these songs talk to God, but we pray, don't we, uh, in, uh, to talk to God, yes? Right. We say Amen. Does anybody know what Amen means? Why do we say Amen? Anybody know what Amen means? We all say it, don't we? What does it mean? So be it. I agree. I agree. That's what Amen means. So be it. I agree. Um, so it's not just Amen. It's I agree, and if you, if you preach in some churches, particularly um, in America or in, in Africa, when I preached many, many years ago, uh, the congregation during the sermon would say, Amen, because they, I agree, I agree, Amen. It would be good, wouldn't it, if we had a few amens? Uh, uh, absolutely, amen, amen. Well, prayer is very important. And you know, prayer is a bit like a telephone. It's a bit like a telephone uh, because we use telephones or mobile phones to speak to each other, don't we? To text each other and do all sorts of things. So what would we do without a phone? Gosh, it would be very difficult because we wouldn't be able to talk to our friends or our families. But prayer is like a telephone. And we're going to learn a chorus about that which will appear on the screen, uh, all being well. And there are actions sort of, prayer is like a telephone for us to talk to Jesus. Prayer is like a telephone for us to talk to God. Prayer is like a telephone for us to talk to Jesus. Pick it up and use it every day. You can shout out loud. You can whisper softly. You can make no noise at all. For he always hears your call. Prayer is like a telephone for us to talk to Jesus. Prayer is like a telephone for us to talk to God. Prayer is like a telephone for us to talk to Jesus. Pick it up and use it every day. And I'm going to make a challenge to the grown-ups here. Do you know what God's telephone number is? <laughs> Do you know what God's telephone number is? And it's written in the Old Testament. But we'll talk about that after. Shall we stand?
Well, um, do you know, that chorus has always stuck in my mind uh, because when uh, I'm not sure about praying or I haven't prayed, I remember that chorus. Prayer is like a telephone for us to talk to Jesus. And there is a telephone number and I'll tell you what it is over coffee for the <laughs> others. Um, uh, so, shall we stand for the benediction? Oh, before we do that, we've got the main, the mind of Christ my Saviour, is that right? Okay, um, I'm going too fast. We'll, we'll sing May the mind of Christ my Saviour, and then we'll go into the benediction. So, Heavenly Father, we ask that we may concentrate upon you in this coming week. We pray that you will make us the sort of people that you want us to be. And now may grace, mercy and peace from God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.